So if you've been interested in shooting Milky Way photos or you've been shooting them for a while now, I'm sure that you've heard of the term star tracking or star stacking. And these are two different techniques that are used to obtain better images of the night sky. So normally when you're shooting an image on a tripod, there's gonna be a lot of noise in a night photo because you're probably shooting at ISO 6400, maybe you're at 20 seconds, 25 seconds, whatever it may be, there's gonna be a lot of noise. Um, even if you have the top of the line camera, you have the newest DSLR or mirrorless, um, still in 2021, the photos are quite noisy. So that is why we have these two techniques, star tracking and star stacking, um, that are gonna allow us to reduce the noise of our night photos and create cleaner night images and great images of the Milky Way and of the night sky. So in this video, I'm gonna explain the differences between the two and why you might wanna do one over the other in different circumstances. They're both great options and for some people, one works better than the other. So I'm gonna walk through everything in this video. I'm gonna show you guys some examples and all of that. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is star stacking. Now this is a technique that has been used for a long time where people take multiple exposures of the night sky. When I'm star stacking, I'll usually take between four and 12 images of the same exact thing. So I'm just sitting there hitting the shutter button on my camera over and over and over again uh, with the same composition with my camera on the tripod and getting this basically the same photo even though the Milky Way is slightly moving. So I'm gonna do this uh, four to 12 times like I said, and then I'm gonna put it together in a program called Starry Landscape Stacker for Mac, or if you have a PC, most people use Sequator. Um, and it's a pretty easy to use program and the really cool thing is that it compares the images and it matches the noise and then it reduces the noise in the images to make a lot cleaner image. Now you need the program to do this because it makes it 1000 times easier. Um, the thing about shooting the Milky Way is that since the earth is turning, the Milky Way appears to be moving ever so slightly every time you take an image. So what the software does is it finds the sky and then it aligns the sky in the foreground and then it overlays them and finds the noise and reduces the noise. So this is a great way to reduce noise in your images. Um, it's pretty easy to do just because you only have to have a tripod and your camera as well as the software and you can get everything in one image. So that is star stacking for you. Now there's another technique called star tracking that has gained a lot of popularity over recent years. There's many different companies that are making star trackers. Now what a star tracker is, is it allows you to track the stars. So your camera is gonna be turning at the same exact speed as the stars, meaning that you can take a four, a six, an eight, a 12, even a 15 minute exposure of the stars in order to lower your ISO and still get a bright image. So oftentimes I'll shoot eight minute exposures at ISO 400, meaning that there's very low noise in my image. And I really like this technique because it doesn't require me to take multiple images in order to reduce the noise. Now you may be thinking, well, why can't I just do that on a regular tripod? The problem is you can't do an eight minute exposure on a regular tripod because the stars will be turning, but the star tracker actually turns your camera at the same speed of the stars, allowing you to get tack sharp images. So I'm gonna show you guys, I've got a couple trackers here um, that I use. This first one is the Slick Tracker. Now if you're looking at this and thinking that it looks very complicated, um, you are partially correct. They are not super easy to set up, which is why a lot of photographers do not like using them. But essentially the way this works is that it's gonna sit on your tripod just like this. Um, there is some little holes on the bottom you can see that go into the tripod. And then you are gonna align the tracker here. So you can see on this tracker, there is two holes, one here and one here. I generally use the small hole. Now the idea is that once this is on your tripod, you're gonna be able to look through the hole and align it with the North Star. So you're gonna have to know how to find the North Star, which isn't too hard to find. Now once you align it, you're gonna simply turn it on and then this plate up here is going to turn at exactly the same speed as the stars, as long as you're aligned with the North Star. So you have to be really careful about aligning it with the North Star. Um, Slick recommends you just look through the hole to align it with the North Star. I find that very hard to do at night, so I use a laser pointer, which helps quite a bit. Um, but you would put your camera on top of the ball head here, and then this would rotate, and your camera would be moving the same speed as the stars, allowing you to take really long exposures. Now, I'll show you guys a little bit bigger, uh, more advanced tracker here is this Sky Watcher that I use. You can see this thing is pretty big. Um, it's definitely not very light. It wouldn't be good to pack it around. So for this one, I usually just use if I'm camping at the car. Um, but this one works the same. You would stick this on the tripod just like this and then align it. So this one is pretty cool. The way you align it actually is you take this piece off and now you have a little scope. So you can look through this scope here 
and look out the other side and align it with the North Star. And of course, there is many different little um, things here that you can use to turn it to the left, turn it to the right, move it up or down, whatever it may be. Um, and then you're going to stick your ball head here. And then again, it's going to spin at the same speed as the stars. Now I find that this one, um, because I have this scope to look through is a little bit more accurate than the slick one. So for that reason, I use this one when I need a lot of precision, whereas the slick one is nice. If I'm just doing a shorter exposure, uh, maybe two minutes, obviously the shorter exposure you do, the less precision you need to have with the star tracker in order to still get sharp stars. So again, the reason why I like this is because it allows me to take four or eight minute exposures of the Milky Way at ISO 800, 400, 200, whatever I want it to be, um, which on my Sony a7R4 basically results in no noise at all. So this is really great. Now, the one problem with star tracking is that because the camera is moving the same speed as the stars, now it appears that the earth is blurry. So you can't shoot this with a foreground that you like. So the technique that you use for this is to take just an image of the Milky Way and then you're gonna take another image, uh, I usually do it during the blue hour, of whatever foreground you'd like, and then you're gonna to have to edit it in in Photoshop afterwards. So you're gonna to have to take that blue hour image, you're gonna to have to cut out the sky, put the Milky Way behind it, and make it look realistic. Now, of course, uh, this is definitely a form of a composite, but both of these are forms of composites. Um, and when you're doing this kind of composite, it's up to you if you wanna stay true to where the Milky Way would actually be. Me personally, I don't like to put the Milky Way in a spot where it wouldn't be, so I try and put the Milky Way exactly where it would have been if I would have shot this at one shot. Um, but I'm obviously using the star tracker and the reason for that is to reduce the noise and make a higher quality night photo. So most of my night photos these days are shot with a star tracker. And like I said, this is a great option. However, you do need to purchase the star tracker, which can run you anywhere from 150 to a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. Um, usually in the three to four hundred range will be a perfectly good star tracker for you guys on DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. And then you have to learn how to use it. They can be quite frustrating to set up um, if you don't know exactly how to use it. I've spent a lot of time dialing in exactly how to use mine and I've kind of got it nailed down now but it did take a while for me to use it so if you're not good with things like that and being very precise and setting it up and being careful not to bump it I would not recommend doing star tracking um, and you also have to do some post-processing so it does add another step of post-processing but unlike star stacking you don't have to buy any additional software you can just do this all in Photoshop so those are kind of the two options um, you've probably seen during this video, I've put up a few examples of a star tracked versus star stacked uh, Milky Way, just to kind of show you the difference in noise and the difference in quality. So you guys can let me know what you think about that. If you want some more images, I'm happy to give it to you. Um, of course, both of these are just a way to get your image to a starting point. And then after that, both images, you could edit the same. You're going to take it through Photoshop, through Lightroom, however you like to edit your Milky Way photos, you're going to do it just like that. So that pretty much covers uh, exactly what I wanted to see say about star tracking versus star stacking. If you are interested in picking up a tracker, uh, I can give you guys a 15% off discount at slickusa.com. And that's going to allow you to get this nice slick tracker that I've got here. Uh, like I said, it's great for shooting wide angles at a little bit shorter exposures. It's a great entry level tracker because it is small. It doesn't take up a lot of space and it is relatively easy to set up. If you've got a laser, you can shine through the light. Um, and I also have this micro adjustment head, which I use, which allows me to do fine tune adjustments to the tracker. So I'm going to leave a link to both the tracker and the micro adjustment head down below, um, as well as leave my discount code down there as well. So feel free to pick that up. So I also do really like the sky watcher here. I'll leave a link to that one. I don't have a discount code for that. I'm not affiliated at all with them. So I'll leave a link though. You can feel free to pick it up. I do really recommend this one as well if you want some more precision, but it is quite a bit bigger, quite a bit heavier. So keep that in mind. So thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. I really hope this was helpful and kind of showing you guys exactly the difference between the two and you guys can decide exactly what you want to do, um, what kind of tracker you want to get. Maybe you want to stack, whatever you want to do. Um, definitely watch this video again and kind of compare the two, see which option you think will work best for you and kind of what you think your processing skill level is at. Obviously, the star tracking is not very good if you aren't very comfortable in Photoshop, um, whereas the star stacking is a little bit easier to get started with. And you can always start with star stacking, which is a little less expensive and a little less invested, and move on to star tracking at a further date. So to wrap things up, I would conclude by saying that I personally like star tracking a little bit more in order to get lower noise, higher quality night images, but I understand that it's not for everyone, which is why you may want to star 
stack. All right, you guys, so there you have it. That is my opinion. I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video, and we will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.